All right, so the next part of this video is going to go more into signs for what spiritual path you should go on, some advice that I have in order to make sure you're choosing the best path for you because all spirituality is not the same every single, there's different buckets under spirituality, okay? But I want to first talk about astrology because you know that's what I do. <laughs> so um, if you know your birth chart, um, you really want to look at what houses you have planets in because we're going to talk about the water houses really quickly. So we have the fourth house, the eighth house, and twelfth house. Now, you if you have no planets there, you might have something on the cusp. You will have something on the cusp. But planets are really, really, really potent in those houses. If if not, um, there's other placements, Pisces energy, Cancer energy, uh, Scorpio energy. They're water houses. So they're connected more to our emotions and inner self. And in order to do any type of spirituality, you have to be connected with the inner right? Even if you're working with the outer or the physical world, you have to be connected with your own source of power. So that's why we're going to look at the water houses. So if you have anything in your fourth house, the fourth house is ruled by the moon. It is related to family, home, mother, our background, our roots. So fourth house energy people, you're going to notice if you're in touch with spirituality, it's more of an intuitive base, right? You're, you're a little bit better at understanding people, especially people around you. Sometimes you get a sense for things. The moon, remember the moon is receptive. It's that feminine energy of that intuitive nature. So fourth house people, usually you, you have a really good understanding and sense for things. Sometimes they're unexplainable things, but you, you, you always kind of, you know, it just comes to you, right? Because remember the moon changes every two to three days. So it's kind of like a feeling for people with fourth house. Now fourth house, it can mean any placement, but especially we're talking about the moon, the sun too, but the sun is more of an outward energy. So the sun might be more of like how you treat your family. But if you have like the moon, Neptune, Uranus even maybe, um, anything that could indicate that you have an ability to tap into that emotional nature of that of life in that fourth house energy could indicate the type of spirituality you can go to because you might be someone who intuitively knows things. You're really affected by your environment. Okay, you get vibes, you get feelings off of things. That's really fourth house energy. Now, if you have anything in your eighth, also fourth house can be really good for people who want to work with their ancestors. Um, if that is a part of your spiritual beliefs, you can work with your ancestors because the fourth house related to ancestry, mother, um, even particularly like the mother side of the family. Now, the eighth house is ruled by Mars and Pluto. The eighth house has, so that the fourth house is Cancer energy in the moon. The eighth house is ruled by Mars and Pluto, therefore having that Scorpio energy. So the eighth house is it's a little bit more intense in the fourth house because now we're thinking about the obscure. The eighth house can be connected to topics such as um, transformation, joint assets, taxes, death, sex, intimacy, very um, deep, intense topics, right? And so with that, the type of spirituality or, that you might be able to get into, the eighth house can deal more with magic because the eighth house is of the taboo as well. So not all magic is taboo, but I'm saying there's more of a transformative nature to eighth house placements, especially if it's like your moon or Neptune, because Neptune, the, the most spiritual sign, we have to give it to Pisces, which is our last sign, the zodiac connected to the collective consciousness. I'm going to get there in a second. But all the water houses are very, very important because it's a different type of energy in order to move to that Pisces energy, right? So the eighth house, you know, if you have eighth house placements, you might work better with magic or transformative type of, you know, transformative type of rituals or you know understanding the occult um you know understanding the the more obscure um nature of things and sometimes that might be being exposed to things that are not so positive in nature you know but you do have to be careful um with all of this you know if you're doing any type of magic or any type of work that requires, requires you to deal with you know other entities or you know spirits or things like that you want to be careful now the fourth house you might see more or feel more of a spiritual connection or some people might even see spirits of your ancestors, fourth house energy. You might feel their energy. With the eighth house, you might be more prone to seeing in general. Um, but sometimes eighth house energy can, can, it can you want to be careful because it's so intense and powerful. It can connect any type of entity. So if you're doing any type of magic or anything like that, make sure you're protected and make sure that you really understand what you're getting into. But the eighth house, if you can master that energy, it's very transformative because you might be able to also do that work for others, um, you know, root work or things of that nature, or simply you're able to manifest and trans transform things because eighth house is that intense energy. All right. Um, then we move to the 12th house. If you have 12th house placements, that is really great for spirituality because that Neptune is the planet that deals with our dreams illusion. Neptune is underneath the surface. It's like, what, what are we not seeing, right? What is beneath the surface? You know, when we tap into 12th house energy, we can tap into different dimensions. We get 12th house can be of spirituality, <laughs> excuse me, karma, uh, <coughs> excuse me, karma, 
um, self undoing because if you're not aware of what's in your 12th house, you ignore it and it's eventually going to come back on you. The other parts video, I'll tell you what happened when I ignored my 12th house energy. Um, it wasn't anything super bad, but it's something that I had to be aware of. 12th house deals with secrets, the unknown. Um, but remember, what you don't know can hurt you. So whatever's in your 12th house, you want to investigate that. You want to understand what that planet means in that 12th house. But the 12th house is the last sign. And because of that, it is the most spiritually evolved. Because it's, remember, it's the last sign. So it's experience first, second, third, fourth. All those other signs have gone through. And then we get to Pisces, energy, or the 12th house. So with that is, you might be really good with healing others, with guiding others. You have an intrinsic nature of understanding things where you don't really... Um, it's not just about intuition. It's like you embody all of that. But the 12th house energy, you have more ability to tap into the collective consciousness, right? Of knowledge that you can't quite know, but it's on a higher level. Um, and that's why sometimes Pisces energy is the way that it is, because there's an there's a there's an innate understanding of life in a way that makes them not need to rush, in a way that makes them feel like things are okay, in a way that makes them um, just more prone and more sensitive. And so the 12th house placements, again, can be really good for spiritual work that, regard, that requires you to guide others and be open to guiding others and having that more compassionate nature about you where your, your magic or your work or whatever it is you do is not just related to you. Pisces energy is about the collective. And so you're able to manifest that in, in how to help the collective. What energy are you giving out to help heal others? So that's where I would start if I was looking at where my spirituality might lead me. Do you have anything in the fourth, eighth, or twelfth house? If not, what's on the cusp of that that can help you? Um, if you're not sure, you're like, what is she talking about? Drop me a comment and I'll explain. Or simply, do you have any, where are your water signs in your chart? I'm not saying if you don't have a lot of words that you cannot be spiritual. It would just inter it would just require to interpret the chart to see how the energy would play out for you. But I'm saying for people who are curious, that's where we're going to start. We're going to start with the water houses and then we would take it from there. All right. So this video is about how to find your spiritual path. Okay. So if you're watching this video, you might be someone who's like, I want to know more. I want to understand what my purpose is. And sometimes I get a lot of those questions when it comes to doing charts for people. Some people want to know what their spiritual path is. Now, the easy, quick way is to say, you know, when you do astrology, it's looking at your north node and seeing what your life purpose is. When we talk about spiritual, if you're like, hey, I want to know more about astrology, tarot, manifestation, magic, root work, crystals, whatever the situation is, um, you know, when we're doing that, we're thinking of research. We're thinking of before you jump into something, really understanding it. Because there might be certain aspects of certain spirituality that doesn't vibe well with you. And spirituality and magic, or whatever the case is, is all about you and what vibes with you. Um, I call myself, I'm an intuitive tarot reader and astrologer. I merge tarot and astrology together. And for me, when I'm always lost, I always think to my origins. What did I start with? How did I start? My start was with tarot and astrology because my mom was really into astrology. My mom bought me my first tarot deck. So for me, and I'm a fourth house person, okay? So I have a lot of fourth house energy with my roots and my background. So for me, I always return back to my roots to find that. For you, it might be more what interests you about it, right? Spirituality. Do you want to practice your intuition using tarot? Are you someone who is more about nature and you want to understand how to be more into with nature or you want to use, you know, crystals and, and those types of things? Are you someone who you, you see ghosts, you see spirits and you're trying to figure out how to channel that energy? There's so many different things that this bucketed under spirituality these days. So it's really important to know what you are and realize you don't have to be everything for everyone. Like I said, that's, I call myself an intuitive tarot astrologer, astrologer. I am not, um, you know, I don't, if someone's like, hey, can you do some spell work for me? I can, I'm going to stick to kind that because I don't do spell work in that sense. I have nothing against it. Um, it's just what resonates more with me is I do candle magic. And my candle magic is very simple. You've even seen, there's one video where I talk about manifest, uh, manifesting with um, tarot cards. So, and, and candles and oils and things like that. So like for me, that's what works for me. Like I'm real, like really simple rituals work for me. But some people, theirs is more in depth, and maybe because theirs is more in depth, and they go and get the oils and the herbs, and they use certain artifacts. Their magic, yes, maybe it might be more potent. But 
what works for me and where I see the most results is what I do. And so you sometimes might have to do trial and error to understand what resonates with you. Because just because something doesn't work for you doesn't mean something else won't work for you. Don't give up and say like, oh, you know, I tried this ritual, it didn't work, so I'm done with spirituality. Well, maybe that wasn't the right thing for you. Maybe you need to look into something else. Maybe you need to work with your ancestors. There's people who work with deities. There's people who work with um, angels. Do you see what I'm saying? Like there's different levels to it. Um, some people are more bound by their ancestral, you know, um, roots with magic. And some people are not into magic. They just want to do tarot or they just want to learn about astrology, but they don't want, they don't practice magic. So when you're thinking about spirituality in your path, you don't have to be everything. And in fact, if you try to be everything, you're probably not going to be as good at anything, you know, really understanding who you are and where do you get the most results? That's the question to ask yourself. Where in your journey have you gotten the most results? And even if it hasn't been perfect and you're still working on your intuition and building it up, where have you gotten the most results? And practice that. And then maybe you can open up the channel later for these other avenues that you want to explore. Um, but like I said, research is super, super important, especially for people doing rituals or spells, because again, you can open up portals to, to different things that you're not ready to experience. And it's also important to know your limitation. You might be a person who doesn't want to work with spells. You might be a person who's like, I work with spells. I don't really work with astrology or tarot. I don't really, that doesn't, some people like that isn't, that's, that's inconsequential to me. Like that's not important. I do rituals and root work for people. And that's, again, that is your journey and that is fine for you. And especially for people who are like, if you're just doing, my theory, my belief is if you're doing something with pure intentions, if you're doing something to be pure, you're not out here trying to intentionally harm people. That's my that's my way of viewing things. Now, I know people have different beliefs and different paths. And again, that's not, I'm not here to judge what someone's doing. I'm just telling people, especially some of the people asking me questions about spirituality um, or assuming that, you know, I do everything. And I'm like, no, it's, it's better that you don't do everything because then you actually know who you are and what energy you're actually working with. Um, and when you're talking about the astrology, because remember, I always bring everything back to astrology. Um, when we're talking about spirituality, I'm just going to give you my thoughts. So when you look at the astrology wheel, it's 12 houses. So the fourth house ruled by the moon is more so our intuition. It's more so how we interact on a personal level. What, what do we do personally with the intuition that we have? How do we uncover our unconscious and our true motivations, right? That's the moon. So people have fourth moon placements, your fourth house placements, you're probably intuitive in some way. You know, you're able to make decisions about your own life in some way. It comes naturally to you. It's You're very receptive, okay? You can go to an environment and figure something out immediately, okay? Um, you might not always act on it, but you understand that. Now, eighth house is ruled by Mars and Pluto. And if you know the eighth, well, the fourth house is, let me go back. The fourth house is family, home, roots, mother. So we think of intuition, we think of those things, your home base, then we get to the eighth house. Now the eighth house is when we we see so the eighth house dealing with um, a lot of different topics: intimacy, sex, death, um, joint assets, transformation. Eighth house is a very interesting house. Um, Mars, Pluto, Scorpio energy. Fourth house is Cancer energy. So eighth house is when we get the taboo. We get rituals, spell work, things that are more um, that can 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 be very powerful, powerful magic. Um, you also remember Pluto can be obsessive. So Pluto can be destructive a little bit. Mars can be destructive. So we also can have, you know, um, curses and work that deals with more um, deeper, more intense type of magic we can get with the eighth house energy. Okay. So if you have placements in the eighth house, your, your type of magic might be more about, you know, your type of spirituality might not be as intuitive as the, 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 the fourth house, it might be more so about transformative. So you might be someone that can work with spells and root work, okay? And the 12th house, if you have placements in your 12th house, that's the house ruled by Neptune, which is dreams and illusions. So this is the, the, the deep, this is the people, these are the people who uh, can do more of the, the, the healing work, guiding people spiritually. Neptune is about our dreams and illusions. So you can kind of take people out of this reality this this 3d world where we are you know 
thinking about our physical world and take people to the spiritual world and help people understand you know the purpose of spirituality help people um, realize the deeper understanding and purpose of life you know so you do have people that can be more healers or leaders or guiders um, in that aspect you have placements in the 12th house you you know you, you it's almost like you probably can do both of the fourth and the eighth house actually because 12th house is, is the last house of the zodiac and though it's the most powerful spiritually okay but again it can you can you know i don't want to go into depth with the 12th house because there also can be you're not aware of what's in your 12th house that can be dangerous and that is what happened with me not dangerous all the time because but it can be self-sabotage i ignored my I was kind of ignoring my spirituality at a certain point in my life and because of that it manifested as something else in my life and so then I had to say um I don't like that feeling <laughs> let me take control over it let me offer readings let me do my spiritual work every day let me do my own manifestations every day let me do charts and read charts and interpret for people and learn more about everything that is what I had to do take more control over it before it controlled me um, and so that's what I'm saying. Like, if you're someone who's interested in spirituality, first thing I would say is look for your fourth, eighth, or twelfth house. If you have no placements there, we can look for the cusp, but the cusps aren't as um, important um, as, I wouldn't say they're not important, but they're not as impactful as a planet in those houses. So then we would look at what your zodiac sign is. Water signs, especially if you have a water sign or if you have a water sign as your midheaven. Um, or any heavy water energy, there's definitely some potential there for working with spirituality. Now, if you don't have a lot of water, the water is going to be somewhere. You might be someone who works more spirituality on the out. Maybe you write about it. Maybe you're someone who you have a business where you, you provide some type of spiritual service for people, but maybe you're, you're hiring other people. So that's what I'm saying. Like, anyone who feels in tune with spirituality can do it, but I'm just telling you certain placements that can give you more of that, you know, especially if you have Pisces energy anywhere. Um, if you have cancer energy anywhere, if you have Scorpio energy anywhere, also look where it is. Because if you have Scorpio in your third house or Pluto um, or something like that, like third house, it could be more you give information about spirituality. Um, whereas if you have in your sixth house, if you have something like Mars and Pisces, maybe you're actually doing the healing. You're at work, you have a business or something or your everyday work is around healing people spiritually. It could be there's so many different possibilities. Again, if you want a individualized birth chart. Go to my website, www.amethysburgo.com. Um, I do a video for you um, where I show you your, your astrology chart and explain some things and also give you a 7 to 10 page PDF that is personalized. Like personalized. Like I don't, I've never written the same thing for people even if they have similar placements. Like I combine all of your different energies and I tell you about you, not someone with your same sign or um, sometimes I'll refer to people with this placement sometimes and then I'll always go follow up with information about you, not everybody with this sign is like this because I just don't think that's very impactful you know I think that you can get anything online you can read a book you know I do both but um I don't even really you know I'm at the point where I don't research I don't I mean I research on my off time so when I'm not doing readings um you know I'm always learning because I don't assume I know every I don't know everything <laughs> you know and I want to get to the point where I know more but when I'm doing your chart I literally use my intuition and I literally use what I know um, and if I do need to look something up it's I'm never gonna put it down in your chart like I look something up, okay let me make sense of okay this says this but let me think about this person what am I feeling about this person um I don't think that really matches that person so here's my interpretation of it so it's always about your energy my energy my intuition when I do a reading so just want to share that um, so again hopefully this is helpful for some of you understanding like calm down it's okay um, you don't have to master everything in spirituality. Just find your own path and what actually resonates with you. If you have any questions for me about anything that I've talked about with spirituality, feel free to drop a comment um, or send me a DM on Instagram, Amethyst Virgo. Thank you for watching.